All right, so let's go in depth in writing a ticket. So I hope you have your mouse ready uh, so you can just follow along right now. But a bit of a precursor before I totally dive in like crazy. Let me remind you guys that you guys are in control of this video. So this is a video recording, so don't be afraid to stop, rewind to the part that you guys have stumped on or over, and then continue from then on. Yeah, so now we can really, really begin. So in order to write a ticket, we click on write ticket on the on the main menu, and this will send us to the customer search window. And I'll go in depth into in in terms of describing more of what this screen is about. So, of course, if I type in part of a name or a full name in general, so if I type in Peterson, and then click on search now or press enter like I just did right now, it'll actually filter out all everything that I typed in um, based on based on what I typed in everything. Um, that is currently on system. So if I just delete this and just don't type anything in, then click on search now, it'll filter out all the customers that are currently on the screen, and we can just scroll through it if we want to. Um, this is a wildcard function box, meaning that we type in part of the name. So we type in pet for Peterson. It'll actually even increase um, um, more of it. So even even if we type in just PE, it'll you know, include everything, all the customers that have a PE in their name. So. Um, Actually, this is a really good, good case scenario. What if I type in a customer that I know is not in the system? So what if I type in Francisca? It'll say no records were found. Try um, another search. Well, that's because the specific name is not in the system, or at least the system doesn't really recognize what we typed in, meaning that we have to add this customer. Um, yeah, so we have the ability to actually add this customer in the screen, actually. But so instead of actually canceling the screen, go into the customer button, and inputting their information separately, we can add them without leaving the screen. So we have the ability to just add the customer using this button up above and inputting the only two entries that are required for customer to be in a system, which is basically um, the customer name and then the account number. So for the customer name, we'll just type in test, followed by comma, Francisco. And for the account number, I'll just type in some random number um, like that. And then once we're done, we click on save and click OK. And we'll go back to the search window because we, let's let's search for this customer again. Uh, test. And now we have the ability to do two options in terms of writing a ticket. We have the ability to write a ticket, a regular ticket, or a quick ticket. A quick ticket allows for the customer to bring in the items, drop them off, and then leave quickly. We immediately, we immediately just write the number of items. So we type in like five and click on save and print. And and we just simply forget. I mean, not like literally forget, but the customer can come in and then forget till the next time they come in. They can pay for the items. They can pick uh, when they pick them up. So these items will be sent to the pickup window. Um, yeah. So all you need to worry about is adding the items in separately. It sort of just makes for a speedy transaction for on, on the customer's behalf. And I'm just gonna not put anything in right now. And um, now the the part that you guys been waiting for which is write a regular ticket so i'm just going to click on write ticket and i'll i'll go over the same thing that i went over on previous videos but with a little bit more emphasis on on the on more functional buttons so let's start with the customer information at any time you can see what customer you're currently working on so i'm working on francisco test and we can see it up above as well as their account number and then down here as well you can check the last time they've been in here and then the amount of 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 money they spend for a year total. Right now we don't have anything because we currently made a customer um, from scratch. But if we have another customer, um, I won't really do that right now because I'll be diverting as well. Um, we can see this number up here as well. In the middle we have the items belonging to the respective classes. So if you want to want to filter out through dry cleaning, we can see these are all the uh, dry cleaning items or household items as well as laundry. And actually, one interesting thing, um, we can actually add pictures in a form of description. So you can see that dry cleaning uh, has pictures as their form of description, whereas household and laundry has text to describe um, the items. And so you're probably wondering right now, how do I add my own items? Well, once you have control of your own system, you can delete these items and classes and add your very, very own, as well as importing in pictures as well and all of this will be explained in a later video so down below uh, let me just go in on dry cleaning so down below we have the easy and quick of charges divided by colors and fabric down below and on the right which doesn't really appear right now 
it are the optional upcharges which will be displayed once we select an item. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's add one item. But before I do that, um, let me show you a, a neat, neat trick. So you see this blue number one right here? That number one is basically um, um, a default built in the system. So if you want to streamline your, your process of doing one items at a time, you don't need to click on one every single time. This, is, this will appear uh, e immediately um, uh, by default. So if, if you want to do more than one item, you can click on more than one item or do multi-digits. But for again, for a streamlined action, we don't, ha we don't actually need to click, click one. So let me just sort of demonstrate that. Let's add one item right now. So let's go ahead and do uh, one shorts. So see how it, it actually appends everything up above. So it'll be refreshing as well as the total. So one short at one dollar. So actually, before I forget, if we have forced up charges on any given items, they will show up in the middle. So let's add another item so that we know that our forced up charge. I know that a forced up charge, so we click on 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 where is blouse there it is blouse and once we click on blouse we will be prompted in the middle with a uh, with the forced up charges meaning that we cannot continue without clicking on a forced up charge um, so I know that the blouse is silk and once we click on the silk it will be appended here so one blouse for four dollars for silk this is vastly different from optional up charges which are optional uh, forced up charges, on the other hand, are forced. So, and speaking of optional up charges, let me demonstrate that. What if we, let's just add one skirt. Um, where can we find skirt? Am I missing it? <laughs> I am totally. Yeah, let's add one skirt. And what if we need to sew a button onto that skirt. Uh, we actually have the optional up charges right here on the on the right. So if we add a add a button to it, it would append it as well as add that initial additional charge. Now there is another way to approach this. Um, if we want to add optional up charges, we have the uh, buttons called up charges right here. So if we want to add up charges to let's say this short and click on on up charges, we are prompted to this same screen that looks like up charges, but uh, you can add as many up charges as you want. Um, one, two, three, as many as you want. As long as when you're done, you click on exit up charges. So I'm just going to click on sew another button actually um, onto exit up charges. And that'll append it onto the last item onto this ticket. So moving on, at any time, you can select that any line and um, change a price, change the quantity, or simply just uh, remove the line. So we can actually remove these shorts, um, remove the shorts, uh, or we can change the price on the blouse. So we click on change the price on the blouse. So from $4 to let's say $5, click OK, and that'll be refreshed. Or we can change the quantity. So we click on one skirt and we change the quantity and we'll do two skirts and that will change the price altogether. We could always do an open item. That means that the item that they're bringing in uh, is not currently on the items below. You can either click on the other or click on the describing price if you have that. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Whichever is more convenient for you. But remember that when you click on describing price, um, so we add a description. Let's add an ugly sweater, sweater right now. So ugly sweater with a price of $3. Oh, no. Let's not do $30. And click OK. Uh, one actual notice, noticeable difference is, depending on what class you're currently on, it will uh, the 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 describing price will be added onto that selected class. So you can see that once we added that one ugly sweater, it actually made a D for dry cleaning. So if we wanted to do a laundry item, so describing price of an a laundry item, let's do another ugly sweater. I don't know how to spell for two dollars under laundry. It will actually add an L for laundry down here as well. We could also add UPC codes if you want to. So if you have any over-the-counter items such as coffee, snacks, lint rollers, etc., uh, you can actually enter it right here, or you can do that manually. Uh, I won't do that now since I don't have any UPC codes right now. And the last two things I want to in in my agenda that I regarding this video is the redo and rush buttons. The redo no charge is when you either made a mistake and are asked to reprocess the item again in the store, possibly because of a stain. 
um, wasn't clean before and, and needs to be redone. So simply highlight and click on the redo and then it'll do um, that will cancel the price to zero and then ask to be redoing it. And for rush, it will indicate that this item needs to be rushed and then add an additional charge based on the, the amount that you set up on the store. So if I click on skirt and make that rushed, it will make it rush and add an additional 40 cents based on, I think on, uh, was it 50 cents? I'm not so sure what, how much it added. Uh, of course, when we're all done, we can click on save and print once we're done and then click on continue. Um, uh, and this will allow us to click on the pickup and delivery date. The system is set to the next available date, which is um, two days from now, actually. We can always change that preference under Store Manager, which will be explained in a later video. So I'll just go ahead and click on the 16th, click Select, and that'll send us to this print window per se. It's not really the print window, but we can print the print um, tickets through here. Uh, so let me just go over more of these buttons. So at any time, you can select the date and change the date that uh, we previously selected onto another. We could add coupons in the form of dollar and uh, percentage amount, or we could ask, also add a custom coupon. So let's add a $2 coupon, and that'll filter down here below. So that's a $2, and now that reduced the price to a subtotal of $8.50. All your taxes and environmental fees and any prepaid um, uh, payment and all the total due, as well as the piece account, will be added here always. So let's go ahead and remove this coupon. So um, clear coupon from right here, and that'll go back to the same thing. So if your store policy requires that the customer pay beforehand, or if the customer chooses to pay beforehand, you can add a prepayment here, and the money like that, uh, and so we add, um, uh, let's go ahead and add a $3 prepayment with via cash. We click OK, and then we'll add that prepayment. So let's just go ahead and clear the prepayment if we wanted to, and it'll go back to the same thing. You can add a prepayment and pick up any items that are currently ready to be picked up. So after the prepayment, uh, you will be redirected to the pickup window, which I won't really do right now because I'll be diverted, but you have the ability to do that. You have also the ability to do a deposit uh, from the customer. This is actually like very vastly different uh, from the prepayment, which is which are commonly confused. So I'll spend a little bit of time um, talking about the differences between deposit and prepayment. So if your store policy requires a deposit from a customer, so let's say that to process some items that are quite difficult to clean, which therefore requires they pay an additional deposit, this is available for you via deposit. The reason why it's easily confused with prepayment is that there is an assumption that a deposit somehow subtracts from the total amount due immediately. No, it doesn't. Prepayment instead does that as we saw uh, just earlier right now, it actually reduces the, the, the amount. So if we were to type in deposit, we won't see an immediate change right now. Um, once the ticket is ready to, to be picked up, they can apply the deposit of amount uh, to the total due at pickup. Keep in mind when you watch the pickup video, which will sort of be a continuation of this ticket regarding deposit. Um, moving forward, you can also print tags. Uh, if the customer is a loyalty customer and wants to see how much loyalty points in the form of cash are in their account, it can be printed out as a separate receipt. You can email the ticket and close. So if the customer has their email added to their account, an email with a ticket receipt will be pushed to the email account they provided. Uh, print and pick up any items that need to be picked up. Below we can print and repeat the customer, which will sort of... Um, uh, print this current ticket and send you back to write a ticket uh, from scratch. You can print and prepay all the tickets that were currently done that day. Uh, here we can apply a direct sale. Uh, uh, we can apply a payment as a direct sale. So if you again have over-the-counter items or some kind of like futuristic device that cleans the items in less than a second, which by the way, if you do, please call me. Uh, then you can go ahead and do a direct sale uh, for these items. It altogether just skips the pickup window, so any items that you do direct sale won't be sent to the pickup window um, for them to pick up. It's it's a direct sale, it's over-the-counter items, they just need to pick it up right now. So that's available for you. Lastly, we can go back to the ticket that we're currently uh, doing, so we can add items, edit items to this current ticket. 
you can add, manually enter the Garmin tags that in, in these boxes provided above. Uh, you can print the ticket, uh, which will send it as a ticket receipt to the ticket printer, or save and close, which is what uh, which won't print print the ticket, but will save and close, which is what I will be doing right now. And that is it. I guess now that this video is over, I'm going to give you an assignment, and that is to practice, practice, practice what you learned by adding a test customer like I just did right now, and then writing a ticket for that customer we just added, and finally click save and close like I did right now once you're done. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time when I dive into editing a ticket. Bye-bye.